Hey, it's Dan from the Binder Boneyard. I'm working on a 69 to 73 three quarter ton four wheel drive uh, Dana 44 front axle for international pickup or travel all. Um, this video is going to be about tearing it down, um, basically just getting the hubs off and things like that. I see a lot of people asking questions online that don't know because uh, this information just isn't passed around anymore like it used to be. So I figured I would. Um, share some of my knowledge of this um, and uh, you'll notice I'm low to the ground here so what I'm doing is gonna try and duplicate um, what a lot of you guys at home deal with you know you're working in your driveway working in your backyard uh, junkyard maybe um, just trying to tear stuff down um, using basic basic hand tools and some of the tricks that I've learned over the years so I'm sure I'm sure I'll hear about it from a lot of the um, ASC certified YouTube mechanics um, for doing it wrong or whatever. Um, you know, this is how I have done it in the past under those conditions: backyard, junkyard, whatever. Uh, normally, yeah, we would tear it apart in the shop on the bench with the correct sockets, correct tools. Um, you know, everything goes in the parts washer, that sort of thing. Um, that's not this video. This video is for, you know, Joe Schmo. Um, I mean, I know Joe. He's a good guy. But still, uh, sometimes he just needs to get something torn apart in a hurry. And uh, he's going to run into a problem. And this is, this is what that video is for. So, um, well, let's get started on it. And you'll see how it comes apart. Here, our basic array of hand tools, um, hammers and pry bars, uh, don't mind that three quarter inch wrench. Uh, snap ring tools, ratchet. I am going to cheat, use the electric impact um, for the sake of speed on this video. Um, a lot of you guys will use regular hand tool. Um, so that's what we're tearing apart. We're going to try and get this hub off, get the drum off um, quickly. Um, so, you know, in the event of a repair, um, this is what you'll need. So, um, Plenty of rags, handy, just for the cleanliness of the parts as they come off, um, and that sort of stuff. So, impact, remove the Allens. I have not taken this front end apart yet, so you guys are seeing it in real time. Um, just because uh, I want to make this as as real as possible, because I know how we run into these sorts of things in the field. Hub comes apart, dial. It's actually pretty clean. Uh, the one that came off of the other side was uh, a nasty mess. Um, so you look in there, see. If you can see, there's the uh, there's a snap ring in there that needs to come off to let the body of the hub come off. So, snap ring pliers, reach in there, pop that. Uh, watch your eyeballs. Sometimes this thing can go flying. Flying when you least expect it. Snap ring is out. There, yeah, just like that. Change out our socket. 9 sixteenths. Rattle these out. These things are very loose. So somebody was in the in the midst of losing a hub. Um, they should be a lot tighter than that um, just to for keeping the hub tight because they do loosen up um, over time a couple of wax there it is hubs off so that's how the locking hub comes off after the locking hub is off you want to get a look in there see there's that big nut you notice there's a retaining washer that has these tabs these tabs bend over 
don't know if you can see that it's bent over the nut there so there's a couple of them several of them that are retaining that nut that lock washer is keeping that nut on there so what you have to do is tap those back so like any good backyard mechanic you've got a crappy screwdriver um, you know usually we use a, a flat chisel for this um, but you know not everybody has that so you use a good garage sale shit screwdriver tap it back get those tabs to bend back a lot of times they break from fatigue from being bent back and forth so many times over the years don't be afraid there's several tabs on these that uh, can use to lock when you assemble it again I believe these washers are available new through some of the four-wheel drive places six states and stuff so so yeah you get that out of the way and then you use that same screwdriver and you just grab the edge of the nut you can see take the screwdriver right to the edge of the nut like that be careful not to scar up the spindle or the uh, edge of the hub but you just hit it and you just unscrew it use the tapping motion to unscrew it then you can get at it with your fingers watch out a lot of times this stuff is sharp it's pretty chewed up from people doing this in the past this particular nut is really beat I wonder if they had a hub failure or something that, that chewed it up but uh, you know sometimes the sockets don't fit when they're this chewed up and you have to use you have to do the chisel method um, to get it off of there. I think part of this is the spindle. The spindle threads themselves are boogered up. That's why it's not letting me come off this last turn very well. With the outer nut off, it exposes the washer itself. Again, it's sharp, so watch your fingers. A lot of times I use the screwdriver to help seat them, uh, unseat them, I should say. Pull it out here. There's the retainer. It's all chewed up. There's the inner nut. Again, you know, screwdriver trick here, chisel trick. Work it around. This one was way too tight. That bearing was getting hot, I could tell. When you assemble these back together, you, uh, you'll tap the nut in like that, kind of the reverse process of this. Um, and then uh, you'll spin the drum and feel the drag. And if there's a lot of drag, then uh, your nut is too tight. If there's no drag, you need to tighten the nut up some more. You know, if, again, if we were on the bench in the shop, we would tighten it up to the particular particular torque value. Um, but again, if you're doing this in the backyard or whatever, there is no there is no torque value with a screwdriver. But this spindle is messed up because this is very difficult to turn. So. Now that the nut is off, you can see the bearings exposed there. So, in a perfect world, this whole thing should slide off, drum and hub. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Um, this hub's pretty beat up. You can see there's damage. It doesn't even turn. Shoes are hanging up. So, but there's 
damage. This one stud's all chewed up on one side, so it's uh, it's seen some better days. So a lot of times I'll put a rag over the end of the hub while I'm pulling. It doesn't want to move freely. Um, the shoes are hung up a little bit. So, no better, no better tool than pry bar or two. Work your way around carefully. Yeah, I see the shoes are stuck to the drum. Drive the bars down. Hit the drum. Well, there's an adjuster on the back of the drum. You can see that little slot right there. There's a little star wheel in there that you can turn backwards. It'll pull the shoes in sometimes if the drum is giving you a hard time um, coming apart. So uh, sometimes they slide right off, sometimes they don't. I've given this one a few turns to help uh, with the removal process. So we got the drum off, uh, it gave me some trouble, uh, took a little time, and uh, it's because there's some serious ridges and high spots in the shoe, and also the drum has the corresponding bumps. So uh, even though I loosened up the, the star wheel several turns, um, those ridges just made it difficult for it to remove, so it took several turns and then uh, some some pry bar work uh, but it came off so um, you know now if you were going to do brakes you would drive the wheel studs out backwards separate the drum from the hub and then replace the drum or have it turned um, and then that also allows you to do springs and go through the front end